Well, today on Nation, a window cleaners podcast. We're talking all about the things that don't work. So like, what do we do? You've probably done some of these. These are the things that just don't work. They don't bring you in customers. I don't think you should ever do them. And you may be doing some of them. So stay tuned to WCR Nation. What's up, everybody? Jersey here from windowcleaner.com, and you are here. What is up? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for coming and hanging out, and hopefully this doesn't suck, and thanks for letting me know that it doesn't suck sometimes. A lot of you guys just text and uh, say, hey, the show is cool. God, so that's awesome. It's fantastic. Uh, thank you for that. If you're new here, seven years of content. Go back, watch it, listen, anywhere podcasts are. Review the show. Because you're supposed to do that. But let's just jump into it. There's a list of things that just don't work. And I know so many people try them. And I don't know why. The industry, and it's not our industry. It's probably just every industry. There's so many industries out there that just... You tell somebody what doesn't work. Or don't do that. And they go, "Ah, I'm going to do that. Or you're like, hey, check out this thing. Or this soap or this and they go ah i'm not gonna do that so many people want to reinvent the wheel they want to have their own thing they want to somehow be smarter than the masses and you end up wasting a bunch of money and finding out ah, yeah, no, no. i mean that's what they said it didn't work so why do you think anyway try it do whatever i don't care because i'm just some guy who talks to myself in my studio and it's kind of uh obnoxious i don't know more than anybody i'm just giving you my opinions as somebody who's in the industry who has probably more industry overall contact and experience than anybody you've ever heard or met of heard of or met i've been a window cleaner i had my company for 16 years before i sold that one started another company, sold that one. I've purchased like five companies. In that time, I've been in the industry now for 20 years. Some people have been even longer than that. But I've done this show for seven years. I have been working at WCR, which I talk to dozens of window cleaners every single day. And I've done that now for nine years, eight, eight, nine, nine years. That's a long time. That's a lot of window cleaners. That's just a lot of window cleaning. I'm kind of a nerd. So when I say all this stuff, it's not just me kind of throwing things out and uh, I could still be stupid, which is cool. Like, I get that. But these are the things that I've found as a whole and almost 100% of the time do not work. And I'm going to share them with you because maybe you're doing some of them. And to start it off, it's a plethora. I'm going to put them out there. But it's those, I mean... Twice a year, somebody's posting stuff about them like they haven't heard about them. But it's golf scorecards, park benches, um, uh, you know, grocery cart things, menus, uh, billboards, radio. There's like a subsect of these weird things that have really good salespeople that just really suck. First off, no one is golfing. If they're having a good game, they're focused on the front of the, the card. If they're having a bad game, they're going to look all over and they're just not going to be paying attention to the game. That's when they're going to notice your ad, but they're angry. It doesn't make sense. But I can get to, you know, 100,000 people for $300. Yeah, because all they need is like 10 companies to be on the card. I have this little ad that no one's ever going to call and they pay for their scorecards. It's this genius thing from their part, but it doesn't do anything for you. All I need is one job that you're not going to even get one job. Don't do those. Don't do park benches. Don't have anybody sit on your ad. Don't do billboards. Billboards, you know, work when it's a cheeseburger, a picture of a cheeseburger with a golden arch. And the background's red. And it says next exit. I can get everything I need to know right there. Boom. And I'm driving to stop there. No one's driving like, oh, window cleaning. I should call the number that I can't save because I'm driving past a billboard. That's not how it works. Like heating and air conditioning or that kind of thing, fine. Heating and air, and they put the big logo, and they go, oh, that's what I need. But our subsect's so small, 
in that luxury side, the billboards just don't work. And on top of that, radio just doesn't work. Yeah, but if they do it, they're going to put me on a hundred. That's you and your pride of being on the radio. I was a DJ on the radio. That's literally what I have a degree in and what I did in a previous life for a very long time and many years. And guess what? It's not that exciting. If you're ever in a radio station, it's pretty much absolutely deflating because they're just a room with a microphone and that's it. Everything's run on computers now. You sit in front of a computer just like I'm doing right now and talk like I'm on the radio. It's the exact same thing. So don't get all excited and don't go, well, everybody's getting there. No one is listening to the radio for the commercials. They're just not. Your target market, if they're listening to the radio, who listens to the radio over the air most of the time anyway? Okay, if I'm driving somewhere, I just need noise. They're not going to drive and then take down your number. They're just not. Radio listeners are older and older and older. And to the point where they're not even the ones that are hiring us old. Like people are on Sirius XM. They're on, you know, um, Spotify. They're on, you know, all that other stuff. It's not beneficial to be on the radio. Because it's going to cost you money. If you could do it for free, no one's still going to call you. But if you could do it for free, then you're not losing anything. But that's it. There's like plethora of those beginning parts. That everybody's like, well, this is cheap. If it's cheap to get into, in the most, for the most part, that kind of stuff just doesn't work. Understand who we're talking to and how we're talking to them. That's the biggest thing. Who's your avatar? I don't know. It's a lady. Figure out your avatar. When you figure out your avatar, where does your avatar go? How are they absorbing their information? That's the big key. You have to figure that part out. That is absolutely the biggest piece. Another thing that so many people try, so many people try, and it's absolute horse knot. It's the, do you want to be on the front page of Google guy who calls you for $29? And I, most of the time, it's a guy with a very heavy Indian accent calling from a phone center where there's 30 people talking behind him. You can hear it. And you're like, oh, and then you're like, it's only 30 bucks. Yeah, you know what? Sure, yeah, yeah, let's, because it's 30 bucks. You're like, yeah, if it works, it works. It's not going to work. He's not doing anything. He's taking your money. It's the same reason gym memberships exist. Planet Fitness is there because people are paying $10 a month for years and don't go to the gym. It's impossible for any of the gym locations to have everybody who actually has a membership come in. They know it's not going to happen, but it's only $10. Well, guess what? You just leave it going because it's only $10. If I stop, then it means I'm giving up. And Understand that's how things work. Now, you may pay this guy $30 a month, and maybe just over time you get better rankings. You see something, something pops up. You're like, hey, he's doing good. I'm going to keep going. Or you go, ah, nothing's changed. I'm stopping that. Well, great. He's already gotten a year's worth of your $30. A month. If you're going to go SEO, which I 100% think any single person who's in business, for window cleaning, pressure washing, any of that, should be paying SEO from a good, legit company. Just among SEO. But find a good company. The biggest problem is that there's so much garbage out there that people get blinded. Then they don't know. Then they go with something. They go, well, the 30 guy's too cheap, but this guy's charging 100. He said he can get me on the front page of Google. I'll do that. Same thing. They just charge you more. Get a good SEO company. It has to be good. One thing is that, it, it, by the way, if you're brand new and you're like, what can I do to get, if you don't have, talk to them. I'm not them, but say 500 bucks a month, 750 bucks a month, whatever their plans, probably start about 750, something like that. If you don't have, $750 worth of work in a month. You don't necessarily need to jump into SEO unless you're really trying to boost things up. But SEO is a long-term, always type thing. If you're a company who runs crews or a crew or just needs to be better, bigger, whatever, you're paying SEO, that will get you there. But it has to be with the right person. Do not hire the cheap guy. Do not hire the guy like, oh, I saw radio ads for this Wix company or whatever. I don't know that Wix does this. Probably. 
They may do something. But what do you think a company who has potentially a million customers how much do you really think they're doing for your SEO? SEO is active. That's why you and I, in a normal day-to-day, -day, with everything else we have going on, we can't do it, nor can we do it anywhere close to as good as a real company. Because it's active. It's always active. It's always doing the right things. There are so many things. There are just as many things that make you get negative points then there are to make good points. And it changes like three times a year. You don't know that, I don't know that. Don't do, I mean, if you're doing it yourself, fine, it's free. Be careful, be careful. Everything you can do is good, but if you can, hire a great company to do that. And I know I talk about those guys a lot, but you've seen Bobby, he's been on the show a bunch. I've known Justin Monk forever, anyway game changers for what we do find a good company do not hire the cheap guy don't get the guy who's like 30 dollars. i'll get because he can't well i know that's what you say but it's only 30 bucks i'm gonna try it you're saying uh, you're an idiot i'm smarter than you cool awesome if you got 30 dollars uh, a month to prove to me that you're somehow a genius who figured out the code then definitely do it because i'm a dummy then you don't need to listen to me Anyway, another one is waiting for the customer to call you. This, this is so mind-blowing to me. I had somebody, this is years ago, a person I don't think even listens to the show, but they said to me, um, I said, no, no, I don't do any emails or calls or anything to existing customers. Like, I don't want to bug them. You know, when they're ready, they'll call me. Will they? They do not remember you. You think they remember you because you're so awesome. But they probably remember the guy with the dark hair. Ah, that guy was cool. What company? I don't remember. I got to find my... No one remembers you. And if they do, they're going to call you in two years, not every six months. Do not let them dictate if your company succeeds or not. Because guess what? If you do that, like potentially and possibly right now, you're slow. If you're slow, it's because you're not doing the dentist close, which I talk about 100 times. I mean, you can go back and listen to all that stuff. But if you're not taking that dentist close, call list, email blasts, if you're not actively staying in front of existing customers and you're only focused on new customers, what are you doing? It's like these door knock dweebs that are out there that are like, oh yeah, it's a great thing. I can get a customer. I did walk around all day just upsetting everybody and I'll get a customer out of it. Yeah, it works. Okay, great. Well, let me guess. They didn't want to schedule again because you pressured them into it the first time and now you had one customer, you did one job and you're going to go find more customers because you have none. Don't do that. Be the person who contacts the customers. It is not annoying. If you send something every single day to them, that's annoying. By the way, WCR does that sometimes. If you sign up for like, there's some people who are like on the email list and the text blasts and, the, and they get like stuff every day and they're like, you guys send so much crap. Yeah, we do. That's not me. We have 64 people that work here. <laughs> there's like departments of people for that. I think it's too much, but hey, whatever. But if you do that and it's not relevant content and it gets into that, then people just don't hear it. But if you're just there and doing your call list or setting things up and twice a year you call them, and you're like, I don't want to bug them. Really, do you think that they remember your conversation, that random call, like, hey, just checking in, seeing if you wanted to get something? Do you think they remember that from six months ago? Do you think that six months ago you remember anything? Let's do this. A little experiment in your head. Six months ago, within six months, you were at the dentist, possibly, or if you're in high rise, you probably weren't. <laughs> that was good. I, I, that was a good uh, high rise uh, window cleaner joke. Anyway, uh, you're at the dentist, right? I use the dentist all the time because that's a nice rotation. Most everybody goes to the dentist kind of every six months and you were there for an hour. Your appointment was an hour, right? Maybe. What'd you talk about? Remember, you, you sat an hour with the uh, your hygienist. 
scraping your teeth. What'd you talk about? What was the conversation? You remember? Remember that one thing? No, you don't. You don't remember. I was at the dentist literally like two weeks ago and I don't remember what we talked about. Because it is not registered in your brain. It's the same thing when you do your fall, fall foam blast, your spring blast, your all that stuff. Nobody registers you did it last. It's like stopping it in a place like, I don't want to bug him. I don't want to follow up. I talked to him seven days ago. They've done seven days of things, 24 hours a day. How many times have they gone to the bathroom or talked to a customer or fell asleep or watched a movie or done whatever? So many things. They do not remember you. You need to be somebody they remember. You need to do that and stay in front of them. Staying active needs to happen. If you don't, then they just go find a company that's convenient for them. They're not tethered and stuck to you. If you're not doing the dentist clothes, which if you're not, you're, you're fighting and running upstream. But even if not, if you're not contacting them and staying in front of them, then you're just like losing those customers. You're spending all this money and budget and time and effort getting in new customers. Easy. People spend yeah, my marketing budget this year is $100,000. How much is your budget to existing customers? Oh, um, no, I, I really want to do an email blast. Is, really? You have people that told you, man, I am your target market. I need love and definitely hire window cleaning. I've used you and love you and left you a perfect review and... I am the absolute perfect client because I've already been all of those things to get again and you're going to go find somebody new doesn't make sense <sighs> don't wait for a customer to call you anyway uh real quick shameless plug i'm a rep for windowcleaner.com yes you know that if you've been watching this or listening to this and i would like to put your orders in all of your orders it's like a thank you to you if you enjoy the content it means the absolute world to me if you can let me put your orders in it costs you nothing extra there's no charge for this there's no upcharge there's nothing not only that i can get you a free gift i can ship free over 49 there's a lot of things fitment issues questions all of that i want to be your guide it's literally what i want to do my number i'd like you to take it and and here's the thing if you've never texted me before take my number and then just text in, uh, say, hey, my name is Mark. Just wanted to say hi so I could save your number. Put it in, shoot me a text, great. But it's 862-312-2026. And I know some of you probably have that memorized. You might even put your own orders in still. And I don't know why. I would love, I get credit for it. And I live and eat and feed my family, so. It's absolutely amazing. Um, so do that. Also, uh, I own the American Window Cleaner Magazine, which, by the way, was started in 1986. Not by me, but I've had it now for maybe three years. We've not only changed the entire magazine. The colors are different. The texture is different. The pictures are different. The just vibe is different. The, like, feel of it is different. Not only that, but you get a sticker sheet to your door every single day, every single month. And it's only 69 bucks. It's less than an hour's worth of your work to get the magazine, to help the industry be better yourself, just to be more knowledgeable than the guy next to you. So go to awcmag.com and get a subscription. It's awcmag.com and get your subscription. Whew, shameless plugs done. Back to it. I, uh, by the way, just want to say thanks. Everybody who's like, yeah, your shameless plug works. That's why I do it. I would love to do that. I would love to be able to put gas in my car. So thank you for that. Uh, anyway, another really, 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 really big thing that doesn't work that people do is I call it litter advert or litter marketing. And it's like, have you ever seen those people who put like rocks in a baggie with like a business card and throw it? Don't litter on my property because you're too lazy to put a door hanger on there. Even if I get a door hanger, I'm like, no, I don't need the service. But you came there. If you just litter and throw garbage in my, my driveway, I would never hire your company ever. Hey, yeah, well, it does work. Yeah? 
And what do you think those other people who didn't call you? You went out and did 100 of them and got a call, maybe two. What do you think the other 98 of them are saying to their neighbors? Do you see this XYZ company just throwing crap in my driveway? Well, it's okay. You know, if people are angry, then they're talking. Really? Don't do that. Don't do that because I know you're lazy. I know you're doing something because it's the fastest you can, and now I gotta pick up your crap in my driveway because you were too lazy to do it the right way. Don't do that. It's absolutely not, well, I can hit a bunch, but now you're throwing garbage. Do door hangers. Do EDDM. I don't have the money for EDDM. Then don't do EDDM and do something flyers. Like, there's so many ways to do things that don't upset people. And I don't, for the life of me, understand why. By the way, I'm on my high horse. I know. Let me go. Just let me go on this tangent. But I don't understand why people, why people upset potential customers in the hopes that they get somebody. It doesn't make sense. It just doesn't make sense to me. Because I'm not happy. I'm not the only one. You're like, well, I got a call. Every hundred I do, I get a book, a book of an appointment. What do the other people say? Do you think everybody's like, oh, look, garbage in my 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 uh, driveway. Let me open. Oh, there's a business card. No, nah, I'm not interested in that. Let me just pick up this piece of stuff from this lazy company and don't do that. There's a lot of things that happen in our industry that people do and they don't put through the idea of a message. Let me let me break off for a second on that. If you do any type of advertising or there's marketing or anybody comes across anything that you do, they get a feeling and an image of you and an idea of you and... Even if they don't buy from you, they have that in their head. If and when it comes to that time to buy from you, they have it in their head. Now, you know how I love my analogies and you know that I love to go really, really crazy on the opposite side of everything to make my point. And here's one of them. Say you're having a big um, clan rally in your town, right? And... The very beginning of it is a big banner for your company. Do you think that would bring you in any work? The idea is probably maybe somebody at the rally who's in support of these crazy nut job people call you because they're like, ah. But do you think that anybody else gets a bad vibe because you're supporting something that's absolutely terrible? Now I know it's not the same thing, but this is... Every piece to this puzzle is the stuff that you do. If we, we, any little league team that came to us, we would sponsor. Now, do you think I ever made money from any of them? No, but I'm helping out kids get better jerseys or not have such a burden on their parents or whatever. And if anybody and everybody who sees that, will associate me with doing something nice. I'm not going to necessarily get money from it. Okay. If anybody at any silent auction ever came to me, and which, by the way, more kind of did when somebody would put on a benefit and then they became part of other benefits and it was great, they would come to me and say, hey, we're doing a silent auction for breast cancer, for whatever, um, and we were wondering if you want to donate. Absolutely. I'd like to give you uh, two uh, gift certificates, each for three hundred dollars uh, for window cleaning. Oh my gosh, it's so great! Yeah, absolutely. Let me—I'll give you brochures and stuff. You can make little, you know, packets for people to bid on them, and yeah. Like, oh my gosh, you just give everybody six hundred dollars? No, I don't. What I do is I help a great cause. By the way, if it's a fundraiser for the Ku Klux Klan, I'm not going to do that because that's, again, not what I want to represent. 
But if it's for uh, cancer or somebody who had an incident or you know, sometimes there's terrible things and they have fundraisers for you know Bill Stevens' family or whatever, I'm absolutely going to donate because A, I want to help people genuinely. But B, I know that even if somebody doesn't buy from me, they see my company and they know that I'm there to help and that will help them with their idea of who I really am. Now, in that same sense, which you would agree on all that stuff, what does it look like when you throw crap and you upset somebody? Like all of those things, you are not helping yourself. This last thing is my absolute pet peeve. And I get the most comments on this. There's so many people who are willing to die on this hill, but it's door knocking. Door knocking is the absolute worst thing you could do for your business. A, no one has ever been happy to see a stranger knock at the door any time of the day to sell them something ever. All right, yeah, they, 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 no, you don't own a house. If you're saying that, like, oh yeah, they like when I come, you probably still live at home, if that's your theory. And before you send me hate, which you still can, jersey at windowcleaner.com, send me a great hateful email, lots of swears. But you're saying that because you don't have your own house. That's why you're saying that. That's why you've watched some TikTok people that did content. You thought that's how the industry works. It's not. Why would you spend all day walking from one door to door to upset a bunch of people? Like, well, I get custom. Yes, you get a customer in five hours and how many of them hate you? How many of them will not call you just because you showed up at their door? How many of them already have a bad taste in their mouth? How many of them even just saw you on the ring camera? And I'm like, Ugh, who is this guy? What are you trying to do? We're a luxury business. Why are you doing that? If you want a job, just do some work and then go find somebody else. Fine, but why go through all the awkward crap of doing And don't be, I mean, you could be that guy. I don't care. There's always somebody who's like, well, yeah, you don't like door knocking because you're bad at it. Sure, yeah, that's fine. You can think that. Um, I talk to people for a living. So if you think that I'm not good at that, that's perfectly, absolutely all right. Uh, or you're lazy, you don't want to go. Do okay, you can think that too. But there's also a way that I could do EDDM and I could hit uh, multitudes, you know, a hundred times more people faster and not upset any of them. Not one person has ever gotten an EDDM, something in their mailbox and be like, I can't believe they sent me this. Arr. That doesn't work. But I guarantee you every person that said no is kind of just upset you were there and then now trying to push it. And they're like, yeah, no, I don't want that. And you're like, well, actually we could do that. Now you're pushing me. It's making me awkward. Get off my property. Why are you doing that? Why are you upsetting people? There's so many better ways to do that. Door knocking is not one of them. Understand the image and feel that I can create with my company to everybody. Donate to a cancer research event. Don't go door knocking. There's huge sides to this, big swings. Don't say, oh, everybody goes, I know a lot of people who get money on door knocking. Do you? Neat. A, no, there's no company that's giant that is exclusively door knocking. It doesn't make sense. Like it's kids that watch TikTok, they go door to door with their stuff and then they do some work during the summer and they're not building a business. I don't know about you, but I want to build a business because the momentum is how businesses get big, strong, and you have to do less work. If you just have to sell a new person for every single job, that doesn't make sense. And one out of 100, 99 of them don't like your company. You've just supported something they don't like. They associate that with you. Yeah, but there's other companies. But fine. Do what you want to do, but understand it's a terrible idea. <sighs> anyway, shameless plug number two course is i'm a rep for windowcleaner.com right you know that right but you're putting your own orders and i want to do that please it costs you nothing extra it means the world to me my number is 862-312-2026 <sighs> so please do that and of course go and uh, also support the industry by getting the awc magazine it's american window cleaner magazine awcmag.com 
get a subscription, start it, it will be to you every single month to your door. And it's pretty phenomenal. So go and do that. Be amazing with that. Don't do the things that don't work. If you want to reinvent the wheel, fine. Do it, but don't tell me I didn't warn you. But more importantly, <laughs> go out there and be. Happy.